Hello everybody, today I have something unique to share with all of you. It's a R30 replacement adapter. Well, what in the world is that? Obviously, it's some type of adapter. We have a medium base, who appears to be anyway, and maybe a ballasting compartment, and I'm not sure what's going on here. We have some, like, grabbers at the bottom or something. But, uh, yeah, it's a director I or one or whatever. It says no lamp, so don't come with a bulb. And the first time I saw this on the shelf, I was like, oh, cool, it must be some type of a fluorescent adapter. You know, like many adapters of the time, they were fluorescent. This isn't so, as you may have seen by the title of the video. I picked up three of these from the ReStore. They were on 75% off. So let's see what we have inside. Move the box to the side for right now. Take this out of its little plastic cover there. Lamp replacement type. Shielded MR16, maximum of 50 watts. Well, what kind of fluorescent bulb is 50 watts? None of them that I can think of that would be this small. This is indeed a halogen adapter. Now, I have seen and heard of these before online on the lighting sites, but I've never thought I would see one in person. I don't believe they were that popular. Um, it was right when halogen was in the very small size, but not necessarily in the, the bigger bulbs yet, I do believe. So it kind of was a transition between that. Uh, the bigger R30 bulbs and, you know, PAR 30 and 38 and all that, they had incandescent. And I believe the development of the small halogen, uh, you know, that style just hadn't made it into those bigger bulbs. So they made adapters like this. Now, I could be wrong as to how that evolved, but that would be my guess because these obviously fell out of favor as we have the halogen complete bulbs of today. And you could still find the halogen offerings every once in a while, but now mostly, of course, they're replaced by LED. So we have our ballasting compartment here, and the interesting part is that this is plastic. And obviously halogen produces a lot of heat. So they have a gap here, and this whole front part isn't just a reflector, it's all very heavy metal. So it's a type of heat sink. I believe there's some other things going on inside too. But if you take a look down inside there, you can kind of see through the bottom with what little light is peeking through. So the socket is mounted directly to a heat sink. We have this collar here, more for style, I'm sure, than anything else. And here's our little grabber teeth that we saw in the picture. So to open this up, we'll notice that there's a little pin here and a little dot. And there's, they're, they're all the way around, there's three of them. So we need to rotate this to that little pin and it should pop right off. So inside the collar here, we'll find our I'm sure heat resistant plastic and our little fins that will be holding the bulb in place. Of course, we have our reflector here and it looks like there's some plastic underneath that too, probably heat resistant again to hold on to all the metal. It'll be interesting to see, well, I guess we won't really be able to see. I'm assuming this has, for the most part, electronics inside but it is heavy enough that I wouldn't be surprised if we have a real uh, ballast in there alongside some type of electronics. Looking in down the side here, it's very hard to see, but I can see some red capacitors down there. And yep, I can see a circuit board. It's kind of all within this base here. So it's heavy here as well. That must be where the ballast itself is located. And they put the electronics somewhere where they thought it would be somewhat shielded from the heat of the bulb. Again, we'll take a look at these stickers here at the top. It doesn't say anything about not dimming the adapter. And it is halogen incandescent. It, it can be dimmed. It's not fluorescent. So they don't mention anything about not doing it. So definitely we're going to try. Okay. We do have some fuzz here. That's just from this, like piece that's over the socket and I picked up at the same time a little 50 watt bulb here it has a black back on it usually these don't so this is kind of a special offering 
And that just pushes right into the pins here. Now note that it says uh, maximum of 50 watts. So we can put lower wattage halogen bulbs in these. And I have some ideas of doing that uh, with some much lower wattage ones like 10 or 20 watt. But we're going to do it with the recommended wattage here. So once we have the bulb in place, we'll take our cover and line up those little bumps here again. We'll just pop it on and we'll kind of line up the bulb here so it sits within its, its little teeth. Then we'll twist it. And there, the bulb is locked in place. There is our halogen adapter. It looks nice with that black bulb in there. Of course, it would probably look much cooler letting the light out of the back of the prisms there, you know, because these little halogens can put on a show from the backside, a little dichroic uh, kind of look to it. Okay, so there's our put together adapter. Let's go ahead and put it into our socket here. And let's give it the first turn on here in three, two, one. Yep, halogen. Now these little uh, MR bulbs, they're kind of like a little par. They're really good at doing little spots of light. So let's turn off our lights here. And let's see, I'm gonna point it directly at our lux meter about two feet away and it's overwhelming it. So if we do it times 10 instead, we're getting, well, let's see, we'd add a zero to the end, I'd assume. So 4,700 lux or so is my guess. That's times 100. Yeah, I think it's just adding a, a zero. We're moving the decimal point. So definitely a lot of light coming out of this little tiny bulb and a lot of heat. Insanely quiet. Let me put it next to my ear. Just a very faint buzz. Not much of anything at all. Okay, we're at 120 volts. And we're measuring 54.3 uh, watts. Power factor of exactly one. Not too bad. Uh, 0.45 amps. Just to cover all of our bases there. Very cool. Okay, now we've seen it on. It's a halogen adapter. Let's go ahead and set it down for a second. It hasn't gotten too hot yet. And let's move on over to our Variac here. So we'll plug it in. And let me plug in the Variac itself. So if I have it plugged in all the time, it hums real good. Okay, we're at zero volts. Let's let it sit here and see what we get. Okay, moving where it should be, that's 20. We still don't have anything. Okay, 30, it definitely came to life. So that's about 25 right there. So it is most certainly dimmable. Let me listen to it again. Same hum as before, it's not like it's angry or anything, but halogens are great at dimming. Okay, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 115, and 120. These little halogens are great at little pinpoint dramatic lighting, you know, having a, a really nice sharp shadow very cool. Okay, let's do it back down. 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30. Very cool. What a unique find. Now, I'm guessing what you're seeing on the sides there, see how it's kind of gone over here? There's probably some impurities inside of this bulb when it got sealed. And sitting on the shelf for however many years it sat there, I'm sure they never got burned off, so no surprise there. But yes, a wonderful dimming range. And it's so smooth, too. The thing I think is the coolest, really, is watching it turn off and dim down. 
So let's do that. Oh, yes. What a beautiful cool down there. Okay. Well, I suppose that is all there is to share for this halogen adapter. The positive thing about this, though, is that now I can demonstrate these little MR halogen bulbs, and I got a couple to demonstrate. So the this is definitely going to come in handy for the channel here. And I actually didn't just find one. I found three of them. So it would be nice to put a couple of them in use uh, for some dramatic lighting. Anyway, I do hope you enjoyed this video, taking a look at this very cool halogen adapter. And also please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.